Morning guys, Jimmy22 here uh, with my January book review, 12 days into February. Why 12 days? Because life keeps throwing me curveballs and instead of just, you know, either taking a swing, hitting it and sending one out of the, I don't know what, what it's called when you get a ball out of range in baseball, but instead of doing that, I duck, I throw the bat down and I hide. But that's neither here or now. Now I'm going to do my book reviews if it kills me. Well, no, if it doesn't, if it kills me, then. Anyways, on to the books. So the first book I read this year was The Last Adventures of Constance Verity by A. Lee Martin. And this is actually my third time trying this book. And I know what you're thinking, third time trying to refinish a book, that's that's not a good sign. But um, I'll get into that. And so the first time I tried to read it, it didn't work for me. Um, I couldn't get into it. And there was some, so there were some story elements that I just, I didn't like. And I I wanted to because I love Ailey Martinez. I read all his other books that I'm aware of and they're, they're always a lot of fun. And so I decided to put it down, you know, don't force myself. And then a, a while later I decided, hey, I'm going to try again. So I did try again, and but I started from the beginning because I don't know why I started from the beginning. I just had to start from the beginning. From page one I began and I made it a third of the way that I did my first try. That wasn't my fault per se, technically. Um, what happened was I put it down on a on a shelf not a shelf on a counter because I'm like Okay, I'll get it later I just I want to use the restroom and for some odd reason I didn't want to bring the book in with me when I came out it was gone And I'm like, okay, I'll find it later weeks went by never found it months went by never found it and eventually what eventually what happened is I learned that um my mom put it in a bookshelf and I never once in all those months thought to look through a book So that's two strikes and so you figured okay, that's two strikes. I'll try again later and well, what happened was, well, okay, the, the new year, new resolution, new me, whatever, and the book's available. So that's, that's the first reason. But the second reason is that um, Ailey Martinez, since the last time I wikied him, has never done a sequel. He's, all his books are like standalone. He doesn't do series or anything like that, which is, which is actually really great because expanded universes, ruined cinema, that's, that's, a, that's a fight for another day. They are. I decided, you know what, he, he, uh, he obviously liked this a lot enough to do it a third time, so I'll give it a try. So... I got the book um, because it was still in the shelf. It was left at and I read it. So the third time was the try. The charm. And so this is uh, The Last Adventures of Constance Verity. And it's basically a book about a lady who was cursed or blessed, depending on, you know, how you see it, with a life adventure. You know, she, she fights zombies. She fights uh, Nazis. She fights her alternate future selves, you know, time traveling adventures. And, and quite frankly, she's sick of it. She's sick of not ever being able to do just one normal thing. And so the book starts off with her decision to go kill her fairy grandmother. And then a lot of stuff happens and you find out why she has this this kind of life that she has. And the reason why she decided to kill her fairy grandmother is because her grandmother said, okay, I'm going to, you know, bless you with a life adventure. <laughs> the third time wasn't easy to get through. It took me over a week. And it's because it has certain problems first issue is it's constantly asking oh is it free will is it your choice are you choosing this life adventure no it, it's it's free will or it's it's determinism and it's back and forth and in the end you find out yeah it was based it was kind of determinism you know they don't really have any strong arguments for free will i mean it's because free will is hard to argue but yeah it was it was back and forth did she choose this life no she's choosing this life no she was cursed with this life no it's you know it's just it's over and over and over again and they repeat it and jam it down your throat and you gag and you choke and it's hard to keep reading a book while you're suffocating and the next issue is it's more with the character the main character connie uh and she's not a bad character i honestly like her but the thing is she already knows the world she already knows kind of what's going on and she has an idea how, how everything works because you know she's always in adventure she's always being thrust to things so she kind of has a, a handle to it and i think part of the problem is just you know you're following her and it's always oh i i, I you know she's just tired of it and i think it would have been better if because she has a best friend named Taya, and Taya's like she's only been around for a quarter of everything, maybe less, because she's been um she's been Constance's best friend since seven, and so she hasn't done as much, but she still do does some. So it would have been nice, I think, if instead of following Constance around, you follow Taya around, and Constance was kind of like the guy, but it was still told from Taya's perspective. And I think that's kind of like a missed opportunity, but eh. and the final issue, and this is the issue that that I had the most problems getting through. Like the free will thing and Constance not being, you know, not, not again, she's not a bad character. I like her. It's just she wouldn't, she's not the best choice for a protagonist. The main issue is it's the same joke over and over and over again. It hammers that joke into your, into you. It's a Jesus, Swiss cheese joke, generic, whatever. Um, that's how much hammering it does with the nails and all that. But it, it was actually a, a problem. And that's because it's kind of like, um, 
Well, you know, Cinema Sins, where he's like, oh, that was a much better movie. Movie references, a much better movie there. And that's what the joke was. She's like, oh, you remember that time? Oh, it's like the time she once had to so and so and so. And it's always, always, always constantly reminding you that how much adventure she's had by her or the narrator or somebody else. Like, yeah, you remember that time? Or once she, and it's just over and over again. So, yeah, that's kind of what, that was the biggest drawback of this book is it's just, it's over and over again. And I mean, it's not a terrible book. It has, it does have a lot of redeeming factors. Um, the characters are great. Uh, except Constance and Taya, well, they can be as long as they're not saying, oh, you remember that time? Oh, I had to do this. Or, you know, as long as you don't get into that, there, there, there's a lot of the characters are fun. There's, a uh, there's an evil mastermind with a, with a layer and everything. They even, and, um, he even asked, he was supposed to be, he was a, pr a candidate because in the book, there's a lot of people who, who are giving like guardian spells or caretaker spells that they're supposed to kind of like balance out the universe. And there's the fairy godmother turned into trailer trash. I've seen it before, but you know, that's always funny. Uh, Constance isn't that bad of a character. I mean, once you get past the jokes, you know, she's not a damsel in distress. She can fight. She's, you know, she's very com uh, comfortable in her old skin. So, and there, that was a plus. There's a guy that she likes and it's just, he's boring. And I thought that was funny. So the characters are, are fun. They are fun. There's a supercomputer at the end of the universe. Yeah, and it's sentient. And it has insecurities. So yeah, okay. Characters are good. I enjoyed the plot. I mean, for all its its uh, use of... Hey, you remember this time? There, you know, it starts off with her, you know, getting a getting the blessing. And it ends with her at the at an uh, interdimensional supercomputer that, you know, was trying to basically get out all... Cut away all irregularities in the universe. And they, they go through a lot of fun places. Like I said, they go through an evil lair. They meet some some twins that betray each other. It's just, it's a lot that's going on, but it is fun. The plot is, it's fun. It's got some nice twists and turns. And a lot of it, it's making fun of like cliches, you know, again, evil lair. And they even talk about it, evil lair. And I think that's kind of where this book, um, it really excels is it does make fun of the cliches. It does have fun with the cliches. You know, they mentioned Nazis a couple of times. They mentioned the, the problems with, you know, time travel a couple of times. And they're funny. But I think overall, my favorite um, part in the whole whole story was she was sneaking into this uh, um, apple pie factory. And it was in Kansas. So she was shit terrified because not Kansas is so boring. Something She's going to die in Kansas. That's what she's sure of. She will die in Kansas. And she's sneaking around in Kansas and she knocks out uh, one of the guards. And the thing is, she's like, well, I can't, I can't just take the guard now. Because she, she reminisces about the old days where cults, they just, they had like regular, um, they all had like out, you know what I mean? Like the cult, cult cloaks and, and masks and everything. So you can't tell who they are. And so she can't take it. She can't just take the outfit because it's like, yeah. And, and people, they learn to stop caring about themselves. So it had to be like a business. You have to like, nobody's going to miss number 42, but she can't, you know, if Jenny's missing and everybody's going to know. So. You know, I thought that was funny. Like, and then you, you see it later from the perspective of somebody in charge of the, of that area she was sleeping in. She's like, yeah, you can't just shoot incompetent people anymore because that ro ruins morale. And it's like, okay, that's funny. You know, if it wasn't for just a constant, you remember that time? The, the book would have flowed a lot better and it would have, it wouldn't have been a drag to read sometimes. And I think the reason why it, it had that problem is because Ailey Martinez, I guess he read, um, Terry Pratchett's, um, uh, Rincewind books. And cause a lot of his books, they have those moments. Like you remember that time? And it's just the, the whole point of this book is those moments. But in the end, I didn't hate it. I mean, it had a lot of problems, but I didn't hate it. And that's just because I think the author's, um, passion for the character, you know, flowed through and you could feel it. It wasn't like a bad priest type touch. It was it was like a bad on type touch. And I mean like on like the kind where she's she's a biker, she's always drinking, smoking, her voice sounds like this. Um, you know, she's getting into fights, she comes home when she visits she has a black eye, but she's fun and she's sweet and she'll kinda like you know, she won't hug you but she'll slap you on the back and even though it stings because you're kind of a little bitch, it's still it's full of love, so you can't help but smile. And that's that's kind of what this book was. It was an angry drunk on slapping you in the back lovingly. Okay, so the next book was um, Supernatural Nevermore. And this was by Keith R.A. Delcon. I'm not going to... I'm not going to butcher your name, buddy. But yeah, there it is. Hopefully I can catch it. This, this, yeah. And it's, it's about the Supernatural... It's based on the Supernatural series. So... You know, and I used to watch it, so I'm I'm used to being the keyword. So I'm kind of at a slight disadvantage because I haven't seen it in years. And what happened with Supernatural was they started to get very very formulaic, and it was just heaven hell, heaven hell, heaven hell. They're chosen, they're chosen. Which is weird though, because my favorite character in the whole series is Castiel, and you wouldn't have him if it wasn't for that heaven versus hell 
you know, struggle. But yeah, this is the book about um, the characters from Supernatural, mostly the, the brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester, going to help out uh, a friend of Ash, who was the computer guy that they never really believed was into computers. And so it's it, you, they go to this place and there's like a haunting. It's it's a lady. It's it's a lady that appears every once in a while. And so while that's going on, they notice there's a there's a murder of some college kids that has to do with an orangutan. And then there's another murder that was very very similar to a, another Poe story, and that's why it's called Nevermore. And so you know they they decide to help their friend while investigating the the Poe murders. So and. <sighs> I think helping the friend is just it's I guess it's there it's just there to get them into New York because they they figured since they're going to New York and they know this this that's fine but really the biggest issue was that subplot and it became a sub well there's no real main plot it kind of like juggles back and forth between the two of them and so you can't really you know neither they're neither of them are very good mysteries like at the end they try to paint up this one guy and then uh, with the the murder it's like oh no this other guy killed the girl that was in the Ashes friend's house and you don't really ever spend too much time. I think you mentioned maybe once, and yeah, so it was kind of like there. Was, it was it was a cop. And then as for the the Poe murders, there's only two people involved in that. And you know, again, it's not the most obvious one. It's the one that they go to and they talk to him for like five ten minutes that turned out to be the killer. So yeah, the mysteries weren't that great. So that's that's kind of that's the biggest strike is the mysteries weren't that great. And granted, I'll admit, I probably didn't get the full effect of the story. Because I know it's a side story, so it's kind of like, oh yeah, you could you could have it, you couldn't. It doesn't have to be there. It's just, I don't really remember too much of the series early on. So I don't, I haven't seen it in years again. So I'm not quite sure exactly how this fits in with the rest of the story. I, I think the dad was dead. Or they were looking for the dad. No, the dad was dead. So I, I remember that, and I remember how he died. But yeah, it's just, the mystery wasn't very interesting. It wasn't. It was not very interesting. It was very... I don't know. It's it's kind of... It's bad when you're reading a mystery book and both both mysteries are just kind of bleh. They're there. They're more backdrop than anything else. And I mean, I get it. Like, there's certain times where, yeah, the the what's the plot is more backdrop. In a lot of comedies, the plot is just something to move it around. But mystery is one of those things... Or in horror, too. In horror, you can have a very surreal experience without having... You know, with the plot just being there. But with mystery, that's kind of... That's the whole foundation is you got to set it up right. So that's kind of what where this book failed the most. And it wasn't terrible. I mean, I, I, I finished it on time, unlike Constance Verity. Um, it had its, it had some redeeming qualities. It's always fun to, to, you know, read the Winchesters. It's always fun when, you know, they're not like whining or they're fighting over something or, oh, there's something eating their hearts or one of those breaking. No, they were both kind of at, they weren't at the top of their game, but they were still. It was more in the lighthearted nature, and that was that's always nice to see. There was there was a part in the book where you you felt some things from the ghost's perspective, uh, and that was a lot of that was I never I don't think they've ever done that in the series where you could you know she's she's reflecting on an experience the sensation of being shot with rock salt. Uh, you know, Dean was he had his his love of rock and roll, and you could see him obsessing and because they were staying at Ash's friend's house, obsessing over the. The album collection and there were some nice moments uh i think one of the best character moments really was uh sam where sam dean said something and sam was like hmm and he and it said you know sam pretended to think but dean didn't buy it because sam was only always thinking he was just buying for time and i'm like oh i never knew that but i guess sometimes you can see that too in the story where he's like that maybe you know it made me look at the re- think of it the re- if i see it again i'm gonna think of it differently because it's like oh he's thinking Oh, he's always going through something, and when he does that, he's like, "Oh, he's 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 stalling for time. He's not really focusing on things. He just doesn't want to look dumb." And again, it took place, and the reason why they're so enjoyable is because it took place in the earlier supernatural universe, where you didn't have heaven and hell all over the place, demons everywhere, or leviathans everywhere. It was just them going around the road fixing rights and wrongs. And I guess that's kind of that's that's what got me into Supernatural in the first place. I mean, what kept me was I liked the characters, and I mean they did have some some cool stories. But it's ultimately it's that idea of them getting in two guys getting in the car and just driving around killing monsters, righting wrongs, you know, saving people. Yeah, that's 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 kind of and so it was okay overall. It was okay. It was it was run of the mill okay. It's if you like Supernatural, you'll probably like it. If you like mysteries, you're probably not gonna like it. If you need something a little bit more solid after reading the last adventures of Constance Verity where it's not just hey you remember that time yeah I, I like it I liked it so yeah it was it was fun it was okay book so the last book that I read uh, in January was it's all relative by AJ 
Jacob. And I gotta stop. I, I Before I say anything, I just really have to stop and remember that the camera's there. And this is the microphone. And the microphone does not capture me. It's this thing. So, ha well, no, I, I need the sound more. So, yeah. This is another book that... And this is another author I really like. And I've read several of his books. One's called uh, You're Living Biblically. And he just tried to live according to the Bible. Another was um, The World's Fittest Man. Where he went, he did... He tried to become healthy. Um, there was one where it's just the experiments. And I think there was a fourth one, but I can't recall for sure. But anyways, you know, I've always liked him. He's, he's a journalist and he does research and he, he tries things on himself and he's really funny. And so what this book is about is he's he's doing research on ancestry and, you know, genetics and 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 history. And just he's looking into the whole the whole branch of genealogy. And I read a little bit into this and I thought, this is boring. Oh, my gosh, this is boring. And so I, for, for this year, I just said, I'll pick it up again. And no, it's not boring once you get really into it. He talks about definitions of marriage. He talks about um, pros and cons of, of world trees. He talks about how how they do the DNA and the different types of DNA testing. He talked about um, polygamous marriages. He talked about marrying your first cousin, which... And he made some points. He said that I think it was that the odds of having a... a he made a lot of good points and he changed my mind. And yeah, I'd say marry your first cousin. If I had any attractive first cousins... Great. If I had any attractive second or third cousin, I don't have a very pretty family. And what I really liked about this book is, again, it's very informative. It's very, you know, and he's, he's got a lot of humor to it. It's very, it's, he has a lot of humor. Like one point he was arguing with his, his, ste his stepbrother. They were arguing because he, he decided that he wants to create, to get into the Guinness Book of World Records by having the biggest family gatherings. Oh, another cool point is they talk with the Hanks and McCoys. Like he actually met the, I think it was the McCoys. So yeah, he goes around and he, he it's just, it's really interesting. He looks up history of names and it's, that's what it is. It's just the whole, all the material is interesting and he makes it so interesting. Like for genealogy, I did not know that privacy was, was a big debate that I didn't know that was controversial. But yeah, think about it. You can, you can have people that you don't know, even know finding out who you're re related to and then they find connections on you. And that's the thing. And this is a this is kind of a harder book to to really discuss, and not just because I completely forgot to write my review on it. It's just it's a bunch of different areas, like it's all in one thing. But it's like, do I want to focus on this problem or this aspect or whatever? So, and I I don't want to because then this this like you thought the Constance thing with Rand was good big long. No, I could go through each and every one of these chapters because it's just it's it's interesting and it's different, but it's part of a whole, and it's kind of hard to to get the message. But basically. We're all related. At some point or another, we're all somebody's cousin. At some point or another, we all have an we all have a family history. You know what I mean? And it's just or or how and, and he told some story. You know, he told a story. He and some of the stories are so good. Like he told the story about one guy, and they have a huge family. I think it was like nine kids, and they found out like I think one of them was actually related to their father because he would go out and you know the mother slept around. But I I think the father knew or he was open to it because one of the kids said yeah he even introduced them to the father kind of sort of. Um. So yeah, it's just it's so much to do and so much to go on. And I, one of my favorite parts though. Is like these little sections in each chapter is he's talking about like the stress that's going on for his, his big get together, which ultimately they don't they don't really, um, you know, they don't pass the Guinness Book of World Records because the Guinness standards are like super high. Um, but it was it was fun seeing the different like how he's reacting or new problems that he's coming along or new issues that are showing up. Like one of them was like he wanted to have like, oh, you know, a space for each different like area or cousin or different nationality so they can come and talk and like feel more included but he's like no the point is you're, you're all supposed to feel included but then he thought of one where it's like oh my immediate family could just join this area but he's like no but we all you know it's just over and over things like that and it's just it's so good and so interesting and it's it's hard to do this book justice um and it, it, he's funny too and that's the thing is he's funny and he's neurotic so you want to read about a neurotic person doing research that's another reason to pick up this book so, yeah, and unfortunately, I only did three books reviews this three uh, three books in January. Like I said, I'm just starting. I'm I'm actually a little bit ahead of this t this time, and I'm I've I've started on my my third book for February, and that's an Aliens Origins book. So, and I mean, I like Alien Covenant. I like the Prometheus. I know a lot of people ha are kind of like split down the middle with that, but I really enjoyed those movies. But yeah, that's that was it for my book review uh, for January for January. Uh, until next time, bye. Have a good one.